Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Chavita Christie. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you string functions in SQL. So let's begin. String functions in SQL are functions that can be applied to strings uh, in SQL. And these are built-in functions, so you don't have to create them. And let's begin with the first one. So the first is the length function that allows you to calculate the length of a string. So I'm going to type select length. And for this, I'm going to use a table called dual, which is available in SQL. And you can use it when you want to pass your own values and you don't have a table already created. So I'm going to use a dual table. And here, I'm going to pass, uh, pass a string. So let us say I'm passing the string database. And then you can write from dual. And you can see it gives me the length of the string eight because database contains eight characters. The next function we are going to see is the lower function. So the lower function it looks something like this. Uh, if you type lower and then pass uh, database once again, but this time with a D capital from dual, then you will notice that it uh, makes the D into lowercase. So whatever characters you pass, if any of them uh, is in, in a capital format, it is going to convert it into uh, lowercase and just like you have lower you also have upper so I've just pressed up arrow key and I'm going to change lower to upper and hit enter and you can see that upper is going to convert all lowercase characters into uppercase like this let's proceed to the next function the next function is called init cap so select init gap which means initial capitalization and um, here i'm going to pass database systems as a string from dual and you'll notice it converts the first letters um, of, of of each word into a capital letter so that is what init cap does. All the words, first letters are converted into capital letters. The next function I'm going to show you is the substring function. Uh, it is written like this, sub str. This time I'm going to pass a string database management systems. And then I will specify some values. So let's just specify seven and 16 from dual. And what this does is starting from the seventh character, it uh, fetches the next 16 characters. So let's count and check it. Uh, this is character one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven so the seventh character is s that is where my output string is starting from from this it is uh taking six characters so count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen it goes up to y so it has taken starting from s Starting from the seventh character, it has taken 16 characters to display. So this is a substring uh, function in SQL. The next function that we're going to talk about is known as the LPAD function. It works like this. So we write down select LPAD and then I'm going to pass a string, uh, let's say, dbms now i'm going to pass a value for example seven and i'm going to pass uh, some sort of a special character here uh, let me pass at the rate and then i'll write from dual 
Now you see what it actually does is L pad where the L stands for left. So when I write L pad like this, then it's going to try to match my string, which is the first parameter with the second parameter, which is a number. If the length of the string does not match with this number, then it will try to make it match. If the length of the string is less than this number, then this function is going to try to make it equal to that number by padding these extra characters in uh, on the left side of the string. So because DBMS is only four letters and the number that I've specified is seven. So in order to make it seven, the L pad function will uh, pad this, these at the rate symbols before DBMS thrice to make it total seven. A uh, similar way you have an R pad function. So just hit arrow key and change L to R. This is the R pad function where instead of padding these X special characters on the left, these uh, characters are padded on the right. Now the next function we are going to see is the L trim function. So select L trim. This time I'm going to pass a string with spaces. So I'm putting, after putting a single quote, I'm putting a lot of spaces and then I'm writing DBMS and once again, a lot of spaces and then close the single quote. And then I'll write from dual. Now what L trim does is removes the spaces from the left side, but not from the right side. And L trim is not limited to removing spaces. You can't really see the spaces, but you can indeed uh, pad this string with other things. For example, question marks. And then let's say that I want to remove the question mark. Then I'll just put a comma and pass a second parameter called question mark. The default parameter is a space, but if you wish, you can uh, pass your own parameter. In this case, I'm passing question mark. And then you can hit enter. You can see how all the question marks from the left side have been removed. Now in the same way, you can run the R trim function, which will remove all the question marks from your right side. And the R trim function, just like the L trim function, does the same uh, work that if you uh, if you uh, skip writing the second parameter and also here you just put spaces instead of question marks then it is going to remove the space from the right hand side uh, as a default parameter and it will leave the space on the left side so that is the r trim string function the next function that I'm going to talk about is the replace function. So it is used to find a pattern in the string and then replace it. So let us write a string, select replace, that is the function. And I'm going to pass a string A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And I'm going to pass a pattern A, B, C. And write over here another pattern one, two, three, from close the bracket, from dual. So what I want is in this uh, string that I have passed A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, I want A, B, C to be replaced by one, two, three. So that's, that's what I want to do with the replace function. And I will hit enter. And you can see it has replaced ABC with one, two, three. Now let's try it one more time. This time I'm going to write down, uh, instead of ABC, I'm going to write down ABD. And you'll notice that it's not replacing anything here. But there is a function called translate, which is much different than replace. And if I try to pass the same thing with translate here, then it is going to replace it 
character by character. So wherever it finds A, it will replace A with 1. So here there's an A. So A got replaced with 1 as you can see. Then wherever there's a B, it is replacing that B with 2. So you can see here it is 2. And then it checks for D and it will replace D with 3. So D is replaced with 3. D was present here. It got replaced with uh, 3. So the difference between uh, replace and translate is that replace uh, tries to find the whole pattern in your string, whereas translate just tries to find a single character. But translate can also do the work of uh, replace. So remember, this was our previous replace uh, query where I had written ABC and I wanted ABC to be replaced uh, with one, two, three. So in that case, if I just change the replace function and make it translate, you'll notice it does the same task. It will indeed replace uh, ABC with one, two, three. It doesn't matter if they appear together or separately, but replace is going to replace only if the three letters appear together. Now, let's try what happens. Uh, you also need to know what happens if you pass a string that does not exist. For example, X, Y, Z, and try to replace with one, two, three. Replace is just going to give you the same string back without replacing anything. And let's try the same with translate, where neither X nor Y nor Z, nothing is available. So let's try translate. Translate is also going to give you the same thing back. So both are similar in this, in this matter. But the only thing is that translate works one character at a time and replace works uh, the whole string at a time. So that's uh, all the string functions. There are others available in built in SQL. Uh, you can uh, read the documents in order to learn more. These are some of the basic uh, useful ones that I have talked about here. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.